This week, Dave hooks up with his twin brother from another mother, the Gooch, in search of some mayfly munch and walleye. Might be a total train wreck, but there right now, I mean, it's looking good. It's like me and you. Just like it. One's a little taller than the other, but still a nice guy. This guy's a little bit more better looking. Than yeah, me. for sure. I'm Dave Mercer, pro angler and all-round fishing big mouth. Today, I've got one day on one body of water, and I am surrounded by cameras. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, they're going to show you everything that happens. And I mean everything. Huh. Bet you thought I was going to get a backlash. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha. Conquer Water, Phoenix Boats, Live Target, Lifelike Lures, Jacko, Eat, Sleep, Jacko, and Rigid Industries LED Lighting, Excellence in Innovation. That's right, it's happening. We're ready to go here this morning. Well, some people are ready to go, not so much me, but other people are ready to go. And that's uh, fishing a super clear body of water for finicky, finicky walleye. So I want to use braid so I can feel that hit, but because it's so clear, I've got a tie on a fluorocarbon leader. But he's back. That's right, it's one of my best friends on earth is back on Facts of Fishing. The Gooch. There we and go. And he's hooked up oh, on cue. Ah. It's off! Oh, I missed him. Missed him! Are we going? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. I had him. Oh, you oh. go! I had him. She bites, but no hold on. Great way to start the show, <laughs> and we're going to want to build from here. This is where we start. That's it. <laughs> See, that's what's going to happen. I mean, you might lose some fish, but by the end of this episode, you'll realize that there's no way you can lose as many fish as us two losers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I got the one. Walleye. I'm coming to get you now. Well, it's a good one, too, Gooch. Nice. Not that good. It's getting smaller. He was better way down there. Get up in the boat. There's one. Gooch. This is a little guy. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, I'm going to hold on to this one while Gooch where it lands his. <laughs> this is the best part of the show right here. It might get, might be a total train wreck. But there right now, I mean, it's looking good. It's like me and you. Just like it. One's a little taller than the other, but still a nice guy. This guy's a little bit more better looking. Though. Yeah, for sure. Mm, here's the fish. Smoked it, dude. That's how they need to eat it. Tonk! Although he smoked it, it does not mean he's large. I mean, sometimes little people pack a big punch. Do you know what that is right there? That is a cigar. Just bite its head off and smoke it. There's one. Gooch hooked up. I'm releasing. You're hooking up. Gooch! I'm glad I let mine go before you brought yours in. Don't lose it. No way. Nice one. You think he wanted that bait? Nice one, Gooch. We need more like that, less like some others. All right, let's get back. Oh, I think I might need another bait. No, one bait minimum. One bait? One bait maximum, I mean. <laughs> These are nice little baits, huh? Yeah, I like them. They're soft. Mm-hmm. I can get you some. Perfect. 
you want. But these are MasterCard, <laughs> American Express. <laughs> You know, the crazy thing is these fish, how they're packed in, what we're fishing is just a bunch of different weed clumps. And if you're not on the juice, you might as well be a mile away. I mean, if you're 30 feet away, you might as well be a mile away. And you notice uh, we've got already early this morning, multiple hookups. And that's what's gonna happen when you're walleye fishing. Because once you get on the goods, your bait better be in the water. So when you're out fishing with your buddy, I don't care who it is, whether, I don't care what you're fishing for, where you're fishing or whatever. When he hooks up, rather than just sitting back and watching the show, Get your bait in the water, because chances are you're in the zone. There's one. There you go. It's a good one, Goose. Is it? I think. I hope. Oh, that's a better one, yeah, definitely. That's a good one, dude. Whatever you do, dude, let me give you some advice. Do not screw this up. Double header. Look at that. They're stick like cordwood. Gone. It's all good. He just popped that bouncing it along the weed and it just popped. Bang, it was there. Bam! It's Gooch's tagline. Bam! Bam. Oh, twice. There he comes. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm! He came back twice! Not guy. once, not twice, but twice! There's a little guy. It's good to see some small fish every now and then though, Dave. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's it not. means the lake's reproducing. That's great. I like big ones, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was you, you <laughs> you mother <laughs> What, I swear. <laughs> we can use that. You got me good. <laughs> Never welcome back on the show again. <laughs> How come you don't have me on no more? Remember that time? You know, one of the major keys with this fishing is getting in the zone, getting in that exact spot. And I can't stress how important it is to be exactly on those points. I mean, right here on my screen, I got three waypoints marked, and that covers about 250 feet of water. So those waypoints spread out, and you know, I'd love to have a giant spot where you could just drift along, but the way these fish are positioned, you need to be right on that key zone. I mean, you need to be pinpoint perfect. And one of the best ways to make sure that you're on that key zone is to zoom in your GPS. I mean, a lot of anglers, you know, they'll look at those waypoints on their GPS and they'll feel that they're in the zone, but if you're out a thousand feet, you may be, you know, 20 yards from the area that you're actually wanting to fish. So always, always, always zoom in your GPS. I mean, right now I'm set on about 50 feet and I'm showing three waypoints. So I can key right in on that exact zone that we need to be in. Fish on. You smash the truck. A real light bite this one was. They're just tickling the glossy shad. Yeah. Oh, We're going another double, double header? Punk! Why are you messing with my bait? You were much too small to act that tough. Gucci won this one. Let's see. Nothing to see here. Gucci wins the war today, right now. Every single time we hook up, the other one hooks up. That just shows how important it is to be right in that zone, right in that key little area. This segment is brought to you by ARE Truck Caps. ARE, outfit for life. There we go, another one. Another one, they are stacked in there. This might be a better one. It is. We're finding them, we're figuring them out. Reach down and grab him. Come here, dude. <sighs> that dude, smoke it. Hunters away. <laughs> We're putting something together. These fish, as my friend Al Linder would say, they're stick like cordwood. I mean, basically, our approach today is about as simple as it gets. I don't care. Uh, where you fish for walleye, you fish with a, a jig and grub type approach. And all we're throwing here today is, uh, you know, ball heads or darter heads like this with a super sharp a trocar hook in it. And I'm throwing one of these jackal glossy shads. And the whole deal with these is they are super realistic and lifelike looking and they're so soft. Obviously in TV, we don't have the technology to show you the softness, but why softness is so key is it just makes that bait look a lot more lifelike. And you think when you pop that bait off of a weed or you're swimming it, 
it takes very, very little to move this bait. So one of the keys is make sure you don't overwork your bait. When you've got it in the water, just pop it along. I mean, that bait, when you get a soft, supple bait like that that moves so slowly, so easily, you don't need to overwork it. You see that tail takes very little to make it move. See, there's blow vision right there. We can show you, I mean, if we had a lot of money, we'd have like a tank and jets and turbines and stuff that would show you that tail move, but we don't, so we have me doing this. That's the key right there. There's one. Gooch. Good one, Gooch? No. Baby. It's all right down its yap, eh? Gonzo. A major, major difference when it comes to jig fishing for walleyes. I mean, I used to believe it or not a lot, not a lot of people know this, but here's a little insider into Dave's life. Years ago, I mean, this is how I made my living. I was a walleye guide, and it, this is exactly how we fished. I mean, we, we threw little light jigs for walleyes, but one of the biggest mistakes you saw a lot of people make is they kind of think of them like bass. I mean, they're fishing a jig. A lot of people spend time with a jig. With a bass, you throw that bait out there, and it grabs that jig, and you got kind of a second to load up on that fish. It's gonna hold onto it and then whack it. With a walleye, as soon as you feel anything, jack that sucker. And I don't care whether it's a fish biting, a fish farting, it doesn't matter. As soon as I feel anything, I set the hook when it comes to walleye. As a guy said once in a seminar, hook sets are free. Wiggle better? I don't know. Maybe. No, he's getting smaller. Get up here. I mean, the cool thing with these fish is you get in a zone that's got a bunch of them. And as you can see, I mean, people think when they go walleye fishing, you gotta use soft little baits. Gooch hooked up right now. But you see this particular bait, and a lot of people would think, well, that's too big for walleye. But as you can see, they got no problem munching on those bad boys. I love it. Now, there's a prime example of what Dave said earlier. This was a slight tick. Hook sets are free, set the hook. There's another one. Another one. They're here, dude. They're here. Better one, too. <laughs> Look at that dude right there. That's the kind you want. Come here. <laughs> I like it. Look at that dude right there absolutely annihilated that little glossy shad. I mean, a super realistic, lifelike looking bait. And you just pop that bad boy through these weed clumps. And as you can see, they come and it is a munch munch time. <laughs> I don't care who you are or where you fish. That right there is glossy shad goodness. Mm, knock that little jig out of his yapper. You put him back in the water. I mean, you know, a lot of shows. He'd already be in the grease, but not us. We're gonna let you go. Just don't tell him one comment. Come on, a few biggies. Wonder if we should circle back and go back over it again. Let's do it. Oh, hooked up. Oops. Maybe not. That looks like a better one, dude. It's got big head shakes or what? Oh, I missed one. Double header almost? Almost. Oh, yeah. There we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what it's about right there. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. The thing to remember about fish is they're opportunistic feeders, and I gotta be honest, uh, Mother Nature kind of working against us a little bit here today. We showed up here late last night, and there was an absolute incredible mayfly hatch. I mean, thousands and thousands of them everywhere you looked, and they're all over the place here this morning. And whenever that happens, I mean, fish are opportunistic feeders. So even though that mayflies aren't around all the time, I mean, it's an easy meal. And you got to believe that these fish have been gorging themselves all night long, eating those majestic mayflies. Cue some majestic mayfly footage right now. The mayfly dance. There's fish, there's fish. 
<laughs> Another good eye. Easy, dude. It's not a triple sow cow or anything, but I'll take him. Uh, it's another one right there. That little dude smoked that little jackal glossy shad. And I can't stress to you how important softness of soft plastic is. I know I've talked about it, but let, let me get this dude back in the water. Whew. But a soft bait is key for a lot of reasons. And the major reason is it's always working. I mean, I don't care what you're using. I mean, you pop it off a weed, give it a big rip, that tail's gonna work. But this bait, whether it's just sitting on a weed and I'm just slowly gliding it, just tipping the tops of those weeds as I work it through there, you know that tail is always, always working. And that's why softness is one of the biggest keys, no matter what you're fishing for. Keep on rocking in a free world. Yes? No. Yeah, I gotta change. I'm not feeling bottom anymore. Switch her up, brother. Switch her up. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. When we got here this morning, the wind was kind of laid off a bit, so I stuck around with a 16th ounce jig head. Now that the wind's picked up a bit, gonna go a little bit heavier, maybe a quarter ounce. Still gonna use the same bait, just need that contact with the bottom. You know, as Gooch said, change is truly the name of the game. And a lot of times people will go fishing, and I mean, they, they're fishing a particular bait, a particular weight, and they catch a bunch of fish, and then they stop catching them, and they just think the fish shut off. But the smart approach is to start realizing where the changes are. I mean, the wind is starting to pick up a little bit right now, and as Gooch said, contact is key. When you're fishing a jig, you need to have that contact. Now, I'm not beating this bait along the bottom. When we're fishing, we're just kind of tipping it through those weeds. Oh, there's fish. But if you can't feel, as I just felt right there, oh, and a good one too, you're never ever gonna feel the soft, subtle bite of these walleye. <clears throat> Look at that glossy shad glutton. That is one sweet looking dude right there. Amazing, amazing thing about these fishes. As long as you change, you're gonna keep on catching them. Don't just keep doing that same old thing and expect for a different result. Changing your weight, keeping up with the fish with the changing conditions, and you'll keep on catching them all day long. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. Every little thing she does is magic. There we go. As soon as I went to move the bait, another good one, Gooch. Not that good. It's gotten smaller on me. Get up in here. You know, that is not a big fish, but one of the, easy now, relax, chill out, chill out, calm down. Look at him, he's nice and well performing. That's not a giant fish, but one of the deals and one of the cool things about this particular fish, I was just thinking about it. Let me let him go. See ya. And it's all about making your every cast fully effective. And what I mean by that is, when you pick up weeds, a lot of times what people will do is they'll rip that bait out of the weeds and, and, and get it right back to the boat. Don't do that. I mean, these fish live in the weeds. Don't be afraid of the weeds. Don't be afraid to keep your bait in the weeds. So what I mean by having an effective cast is, when I make a long cast, I want that bait to be working effectively as much as possible the whole way back to the boat. So the best way to do that is we're fishing, whether we're fishing weed lines here today or weed clumps in these different areas. When you feel those weeds, just slowly pull it out of there and that can trigger strikes. And that's exactly what just happened with that fish. As soon as I went to pull it out of those weeds, boom, smoked it. Bam. He felt better at the beginning, but then he got smaller. We got the walleye chop. Wind is blowing. There we are. Hooked up. Oh, we almost doubled. Gooch. There you go. Nice one, Gooch. Let's catch some more. Fish. Good one? I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. There you go, There's Gooch. There's a decent one right there. Now you're talking. That's the one I'm looking for. There we go. All right. Basically what I'll do on a cast, I mean, 
You cast it way out there. I mean, you don't want to get it too far from the boat because you want to have good contact when that fish hits. But I'm just going to slowly pop that way, kind of tickle it through those weeds. I mean, every once in a while you have to give it a harder pop to get it cleared of those weeds. But you just want just a short little pop like that, get it out of those weed tops, and move on to the next one. And you'll cash in on some of these bad mamma jammas. Come on, big fish. There's fish. Could be a good one, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a big one. Oh, sow. That's the kind you want. Come back here and grab them. Oh. <laughs> Look at that dude right there. <laughs> I like it when they go munch munch like that. Absolutely annihilated that little jackal glossy shad. Whew. That is the kind you want right there. I mean, just moments before I hooked this fish, I adjusted my swim bait, and that is one of the keys with this type of fishing. You want to make sure your swim bait is straight, just because it's going to swim a lot more in line. And as you can see, they get eaten. You know, every once in a while, people will talk about finesse and taking it slow with these eyes, but as you can see, these bad mamma jammas, they are eating machines. The Gooch and Dave fished for 5 hours and 18 minutes, made 914 casts, and despite the fish gorging on mayflies all night, this undynamic duo still managed to catch 20 fish. And that's the score. Now it's time for the facts. Every one of today's fish inhaled a 3.8 inch ghost minnow colored jackal glossy shad rigged on a 1 8 ounce trocar darter head jig fished on a 7-foot medium-action Shimano Zodius rod, paired up with a Shimano Stella 3000, and spooled up with 10-pound Timber Brown Power Pro Super Slick braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. Now you've got the facts.